Ah, a new face. Salve, and welcome to a little community. My name's impossible to pronounce for most people, so you can just call me Virgil. You arrived on a sad day, friend. What with Julia's death? I wish we could have met under better circumstances. Look, I haven't done anything wrong, if that's what you're thinking. Somebody just has a problem with my... preference for male company. Hey, nothing gets by you, huh? Sorry, that was mean. I yes, I like men. And when you grow up in the north, as I did, in the city of Novio Magus, you expect a bit of hostility. The Batavi are not known for their tolerance. I saw enough friends killed or driven away to know the cost of not keeping your personal affairs to yourself. So I hid who I was for... what was it? Nearly ten years? Watching what I said and where I looked. But that kind of fear eats away at you slowly, until living isn't any better than the thing you were afraid of. Needless to say, since I'm now living underground, halfway across the known world with an assumed name, my openness didn't go down well among the enlightened folk of the Batavi. Nice of you to say, but not necessary. In any case, the Romans are far more accepting, and among them, I get to be who I am. Or at least, I thought that was the case. It seems I was wrong. Uh, it's not just graffiti. I have quite a collection of handwritten notes too. The strange thing is, I keep my personal affairs to myself. I've never really been interested in any of the men here. Not my type. So I'm not sure what I could have done to upset this person. If I had to guess, I'd say it's probably one of those cultists. Strange bunch. They insist there's only one God, and that he considers my nature a sin. Can you believe that? If there are any of them here, they won't admit it. Not since they supposedly burned down half of Rome last year and went into hiding. All I know is, if these threats keep escalating, eventually my secret admirer is going to cross a line and break the golden rule. What? Really? I... I didn't expect that. But thanks. It's always a pleasure to meet someone so selfless. I'm glad you arrived when you did. I'd start by figuring out who the cultists are. Or maybe ask around among the merchants here. Someone who lives or works in the forum must have seen something. But if you find them, please don't hurt or humiliate them. I suspect they're just confused. Come back and let me know what you find. Greetings and salutations. Hello again, my sartorial friend. This is troubling, is it not? I am afraid I have no idea. It is ridiculous though, Virgil is a fine man. But my young friend Fabia confided in me that she saw someone leaving graffiti on his shop front last night. Perhaps you should ask her about it. I hope that our path... shall suffer for the sins of the one.
Salve, friend. Mind telling me who you are and why you look like you've just taken on a gladiator and lost? Uh... Oh. Ixian turns. Traveler from a faraway land. What are you doing in here? She needs the resin of. It's too late. No, no, now is fine. I wish some people here need proper medical care. Just don't get sick or injured here. Oh no. Sorry, I don't mean to worry you, but no, that is definitely not normal. There was one other person who claimed she could hear the statues talking to her. But that was Nevia, and uh, she went a little mad. Well, she used to run the clinic until she suddenly lost this chip, the la and the she's been gone, but I won. He's become so irritable, I just... Thanks. Well... There are no other weapons in the city. We all went along with the Magistrate's weapons ban, so it wouldn't be an issue. That's why I've got to get in first before someone else beats me to it. Ugh. Salve, stranger, and welcome to our idyllic little slice of the Empire. Terrible shame what happened to you here. But we just have to carry on, don't we? Certainly. Oh, it's perfectly legal. Simply a question of supply and demand, I'm afraid. Take it or leave it. Hear what? Ah, uh, are you sure you're feeling all right? She claimed the statue was a whispering to her. Nobody else could hear it, but I digress. Do you want this sylphium or not? That's hardly my concern. Well, if you did that, you'd break the golden rule, and we'd share the same fate as the last lot who lived here. Is that what you want? Do you think I don't know a bluff when I see one? Nice try. That's... Well... Don't you dare. The many shall suffer for the sins of the one.
Greetings and salutations. Whatever's in that great temple up there on the bluff, I bet it's worth a fortune. The many shall suffer for the sins of the one. Salutations. Salve. Salve. It's terrible for inflation, is what it is. There's so much gold just lying around, it's practically worthless. Of course, I have an idea for generating real wealth, but what I need is a bow. I've scoured this city from top to bottom with no luck. But if you happen to find one, bring it to me and we'll talk. Thank you, friend. I don't, I'm afraid. But I did overhear Fabia telling Georgius she saw something. She was headed to the baths not long ago. Maliolus. I mean, Sentius couldn't even keep his daughter safe. Certainly. I'm afraid not. If you're desperate, I did hear that Aurelia down at the tavern claims to know of a way out, but some people here are a little shady for my liking. You mean, how did I end up here? That is a lengthy tale. All right. Well, you see, I'm in the business of procuring rare and precious objects liberated from the enemies of Rome. Mostly sculptures, vases, the occasional slave, fetch a magnificent price in Roman high society. Had myself a nice little shop in Rome, just off the Forum. Lots of foot traffic and close to the docks. Good place to be when the fires broke out. See, about seven months ago, half of Rome caught on fire. Everyone who couldn't get to an outer gate was running for the river, hoping to escape by a barge. So I gathered my coins and some priceless vases into a cart and had my most loyal slave girl, pretty young thing named a camphor, push it for me. All the way down to the river, I'm elbowing for a stampede of people, turning back now and then to make sure she hasn't legged it with my valuables. But, to my surprise, we make it, and I see this barge loading up, and it's so full it's almost sinking. But the captain's happy to take my coin, so I start boarding, and then he puts his hand on my chest, and he says, No, too heavy. The cart or the girl. So I did what anyone would have done. Of course I chose the car. I mean, I can always buy a new slave girl, if I still have my money. So I put me hand in the car, and I guess you realise what was happening, because those pretty black eyes of hers go all wide. And in one swift motion, she topples the whole bloody thing into the Tiber. Naturally, I dived in after it, hoping to salvage my fortune. Only, I guess I must have hit my head or something, because everything went black. When I came to, I'd washed up on the riverbank not far from here with nothing in the world but a single silver coin. Thank you, friend. 
But it turns out it might have been a stroke of good fortune because this place is a veritable treasure trove. Look around you, there must be more gold in here than in the treasury of Rome. Very well. Help! You have to do something! A man arrived in the baths. A real nasty sort, with his face all covered up. And he's got a weapon! You have to do something, or he's gonna break the golden rule. Are you serious? Are you going to help? Thank you. I have to hide. What? Ugh. The shrine is collapsing! <laughs> Come and join me by the fire. Welcome, welcome. May I ask your name? It's a sincere pleasure to meet you. Tell me, what brings you all the way down here? Then perhaps the fates brought you here to learn the secrets of this place. I will tell you everything I know, but first, a request. I have been living down here alone for many years, with nobody to talk to but myself. The one thing I long for above all else before I die is a good philosophical argument with somebody astute. I'm hoping that person is you. Let us find out with this simple question. Have you deduced the name of the god responsible for the golden rule? Hmm. You have much to learn. It's best if you figure it out on your own. Stop right there. I am looking for Tiberius Quintius Crispus. 
otherwise known as Quinctius. Do you know where he is? I'm not sure I believe that, so allow me to explain something to you. I am here with orders from Emperor Nero himself to find and execute the cultist Quinctius for terrible crimes against the Empire. So, if you tell me the truth, I will allow you to live. But if you lie to me, or otherwise obstruct the Emperor's business in any way, I will put this arrow through your chest. Is that understood? Thank you. Now tell me, who are you people, and what is this place? A small community. <laughs> I was told Quinctius was a cultist, but I never thought he'd be foolish enough to lead me right to the heart of his mystery cult. Oh, don't play coy with me. I don't care if you're worshipping Bacchus, Magna Mater, or Christ. You lot are all the same to me. Always sneaking off to your secret sanctuaries, indoctrinating each other with your little mantras. The Emperor may have tolerated your activities up until now, but after what Quinctius did, those days are numbered. You say that, but if you're not a cult, then why go to such great lengths to keep this place a secret? So you admit you're not allowed to leave. Threatening me is not going to help you, but in any case, that sounds an awful lot like a cult to me. And I saw the inscription saying, the many shall suffer for the sins of the one. I take it this is some kind of mantra, you all believe? Ugh, a distinction without a difference. You've clearly been indoctrinated into this nonsense. Now tell me, where did you lot get enough gold to make all these statues? You lot are practicing human sacrifice, too. You people disgust me. Of course you'd say that, but that's what your kind do, isn't it? Our God told us to do it. It's all clear to me now. The secret sanctuary, the indoctrination, the mantra, the human sacrifice. You're cultists. There's no doubt in my mind. What baffles me is how a person can believe in something with such zeal. They just can't see what they've become. However, you still have a chance to redeem yourself by telling me where Quintius is. Do not waste it. Very well, here's what I know. He's a 40 to 50 year old man with distinctive eyes, one green and one blue. He's also known to have delusions of grandeur. The Emperor says he and his cult, your cult, are responsible for starting the fire which burnt half of Rome to the ground and killed thousands in the process. Who are you to challenge what the Emperor says? Were you there? Do you have spies and scouts all over Rome, like he does? No, you do not. This is your last chance. Are you going to tell me where he is or not? <sighs> then you're of no use to me. Do you have any last words? As a matter of fact, I do. Once I'm done with you and Quintius, I intend to kill every last one of you wretched degenerates. And I can think of nothing I'd enjoy more. The many shall suffer for the sins of the one.
Uh, uh, no, you know, not right in the head. <laughs> That's all right. We sort of lose track of the date down here, but it feels like the beginning of spring to me, so I'd say early March? It's 817 AUC. Sorry, you look confused. 817 years since the founding of Rome. Which part of the Empire are you from, exactly? C.E.? No idea what you're talking about. But listen, most folks seem a bit confused when they get here, but you... you seem very lost. Live by our... All right, friend. Suit yourself. You know, it's lit. Oh. On your best behavior, I trust. We're finally alone. I assume you all... We have? I must have entrusted... Is that a bad... Ah, uh, look, it's unfortunate. But now, I assume you... Of course, what... Yeah. What? An assassin? What are you talking about? Then what are you doing here, talking to me? Why aren't you out there trying to stop him? You'd best go, quickly. You mean to say you've tried every non-lethal measure you can? Well then, in that case, as much as it pains me to do so, I must act decisively to ensure the survival of my people. As magistrate, I hereby declare him an enemy of Rome and authorize his execution by your hand, forthwith. I don't believe so, no. Any way you can, despite my weapons ban, it's been my experience one can always find a weapon if one looks hard enough. Thank you. Whatever are you wearing? <laughs> are they? On your best behavior, I trust? What is it? I went around asking the same questions when I first arrived. To bear trials with a calm mind robs misfortune of its strength and burden. He's one of the better commanders I've ever had, that's for sure. Good stoic. Treat your inferior as you would wish your superior to treat you. Can't ask for much more than that. I'm a legionary of the first Italica, but there's not a lot of fighting down here. So the magistrate has assigned me other duties. I act as the magistrate's right-hand man, keeping an eye on his daughters. Uh, daughter, I should say. And the others. I also keep a register of new arrivals. I'm from Liguria, of North originally. I was doing all right for myself. Not anymore. My commander sent me to deliver a message to Rome. That's when the crowd started flooding through the streets. 
shouting fire. Then some Genetricum Fugitor tried to take advantage of the chaos and pinch my pendant. I remember chasing him through the crowds, down towards the river. And then, nothing. Blacked out and woke up near here. No idea how I ended up floating so far down river. But, I'm fortunate to be alive, I suppose. Ah, don't be. That said, I don't see why not. I'm not sure why you said it like that, but whatever. All right. A new face. Well, I'm an architect. Or oh, at least I was back in Rome. Help out with repairs and try to stop old buildings from collapsing on people. But you probably don't want to hear about the ingenious architecture or mysterious history of this place. Oh, I'm glad you asked. Some of these shrines they constructed hundreds of years ago, which means Romans have been arriving here for at least that long. But there's one thing that puzzles me. The oldest shrine in this avenue isn't Roman at all. It's Greek. Well, yes, that could be the reason. Or it could mean that there were Greeks living and worshipping here before the Romans arrived. Which begs the interesting question, who really built this place? If only there was a way we could talk to the people who came here before us. Gladly. Personally, my favorite thing about this place is the aqueducts. Those series of adjoining arches. They're an ingenious feat of Roman engineering with a very practical purpose. They take fresh water coming from outside the city and distributed all across the chasm. It's funneled below the palace and into a cistern beneath the great temple. And the rest is funneled to the shrine of Proserpina, where it fills the lake and allows us to fish and farm. Hey, not so loud. Just talking about that could anger the gods for all we know. I'm not saying it's impossible, but you'd have to find a way inside somehow. Just please. Try to be a bit more discreet about it. You mean the great temple? This one's a bit of a mystery. Given the way it's positioned so prominently, looking down on us, it's clear that whoever built it felt it was the most important temple in the city. Unfortunately, someone else went out of their way 
to keep its purpose a mystery. You see, usually a temple is dedicated to a particular god, like there's an obelisk out the front, which probably used to bear the name of this unknown god. But it appears some barbarian defaced it. And of course we can't get inside because it's locked up tighter than the temple of Saturn in Rome. So we're all left wondering, which god is that temple dedicated to? And could it be the one responsible for the golden rule? Unless somebody figures out a way inside, I suppose we'll never know. Of course. You wouldn't believe how often the new ones ask that question. There are much worse places to live out your days. You might have a few sleepless nights thinking about the golden rule. But once you get used to the fear, knowing that a single slip-up could cost you everything, it's not too bad. Nothing new to me, anyway. Some people say it's divine, the work of a god. But I'm not so sure. It just seems so... flawed to me. Like it's distinctly... human. I mean, once you've been here long enough, you'll notice people doing things that just seem so wrong to you. But this so-called god doesn't seem to care. Which means one of two things. Either you don't know the difference between right and wrong, or this unknown god doesn't. And I'm pretty sure I know the difference. Do you? Good. Then I hope you'll agree that there are only two ways of dealing with unfair rulers. The first is to leave. The second is to remove the ruler from power. And it seems leaving may not be an option. Good question. It's best if I say no more, but... Well, Maliolis is talking about loosening some of the restrictions in this place. And while it's all a bit vague, at least he has a vision. My vote isn't for sale, if that's what you're asking. Nice to talk to you.